Shri Rohit Kansal, who is the Principal Secretary to the Government of JNK and heads the Information and Higher Education Departments. Uh, he's a civil, he's a senior civil servant, and uh, he belongs to the batch 1995 of IAS. Uh, he's also been the official spokesperson of the government in his over two, uh, two decades long career in public service. He has held multiple challenging uh, public uh, policy assignments in diverse sectors. And he has been keenly involved in policy framework and ambush, uh, on, on different levels. Uh, he's best known for initiating and implementing the very successful and innovative Back to Village program in JNK, and has found a mention not just in the radio broadcast Monkey Battle, also uh, during the Independence Day speech of the Prime Minister. Uh, in 19, uh, in 2014, when the worst floods hit uh, Kashmir Valley, he actually led the relief process significantly and it has been highly acclaimed. Um, he's also lectured at various institutions across the world in, in countries like Japan, Cambodia, Australia and others. And uh, besides this, he has been an Emerging Leaders Fellow of Australia India Institute at the University of Melbourne as well as a fellow at the London School of Economics, London. He is a fellow of the third generation Ananta Aspen Kamal Nayan Bajaj Fellowship and member of Aspen Global Leadership Network. Uh, Sri Kansal has been kind enough to accept the invite and he would be uh, speaking about communicating with citizens during the pandemic and also look at the communication that, uh, that could help create effective governance model. So. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kadri, and uh, thank you so much. I think uh, I'm uniquely privileged to be among uh, such a distinguished group. To begin with, uh, I'm fascinated with the idea of uh, uh, GMEC and uh, its concept of uh, 75 years of India's independence. I was reading the papers that you sent me, 75 years, 75 speakers, 75 days. And I think um, as we approach the 75th anniversary of India's independence, it is time for us to uh, look back at uh, where we have reached, what we have achieved, and uh, what is uh, yet that remains uh, undone. Uh, 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 I remember around 10 years ago, Dr. C.K. Prahlad, uh, who was probably then at uh, uh, Columbia, he uh, came out with this concept of India and, at 75 and uh, exhorted all of us Indians to uh, look at uh, uh, what are the things that India needs to do. And uh, as we move into the next millennium, I think this is one important landmark. And I'm really glad that uh, you have taken it up in your own way to move forward uh, in this direction. Uh, uh, I've been uh, 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 I've been privileged to uh, uh, hear uh, so many experts in the field of media. Uh, well, I'm uh, just a humble learner. I have absolutely no formal exposure to media. But then, as I hear Dr. Kidwai talking about post truth, or uh, uh, Dr. Hallian talking about professionalism, or even Mr. Call talking about fact checking, I realize that uh, while uh, professional and the sanctity of truth is uh, extremely important. And uh, uh, as George Orwell would have said, all men are equal, but some are more equal than others. And uh, this stinging dystopian work, uh, 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 Animal Farm, which he followed up with his uh, equally stinging and prescient work uh, titled 1984, I think, uh, which we are seeing it's in its full fruition and uh, uh, today, and we are seeing the prescience of George Orwell uh, in that monumental work. But we also realize how mm, new journalism has to marry the age-old uh, uh, sanctity of truth and uh, the need for professionalism with an equally important need to embrace the new technologies so that uh, 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 while we are with our uh, professional attributes on one hand, we also embrace all the new technologies to uh, further embellish and empower what are the basic tenets of uh, journalism. I think it's a paradox of our time uh, that uh, while uh, the flow of information has uh, never been greater than it is today, but the need for credibility and the need to establish uh, uh, the truth has also never been greater as it is today. And I think these two paradoxes lie uneasily with each other. 
Uh, as I said, you know, uh, I'm no professional, I'm no expert, but, uh, uh, you know, I have been looking at things, so to say, from the other side of the table. And in particular, uh, uh, the past two years in which the COVID pandemic uh, uh, has been ravaging all of us, uh, I was looking at... Uh, a very interesting research paper which was done by uh, Professor Shamika Ravi and another uh, on uh, media in the COVID period. And uh, I was amazed to uh, actually uh, the concept of media and collaboration with the state are in a sense oxymoronic because I think it is the job of the media to question the state and it is the job of the media to uh, pose hard questions to the state. But uh, when it comes to situations like the situation of pandemic, uh, I think uh, uh, there is a paradigm shift in the sense that you need a far more uh, collaborative and symbiotic existence. Uh, and in this paper by Professor Shyamika Ravi and uh, others that I'm talking about, she does some very interesting uh, research and uh, she says that uh, uh, in just before the uh, uh, COVID second phase, media attention was diverted from COVID-19 topics to all other topics, including farmers' protests, uh, uh, elections, entertainment, cricket matches, etc. And uh, very interestingly, the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic is, uh, uh, is cyclical in nature. It is cyclical in nature because uh, uh, you have uh, a high pandemic incidence. A high pandemic incidence is uh, accompanied by uh, uh, an onslaught in the media, which leads to a fall in the number of cases, which leads to reduced media attention, and which leads to higher number of cases. So quite logically, the need for the highest media attention arises in the period when the number of cases are at an end, at their lowest. This might actually seem paradoxical and counterintuitive, but given the nature of the pandemic, the need for a media onslaught is just before a wave begins to set in, because that is what will prevent the, the wave from taking over. But unfortunately, as this research shows, it happened just the opposite. And while there has been a lot of literature on what government did or did not do, there has been very little literature on how uh, the media could have uh, performed more effectively in a period just leading to the pandemic, uh, thereby maybe reducing, maybe reducing the incidence to some extent. Uh, there is also the issue of the tragedy of the commons here because uh, uh, because it's in that sense a common good and uh, where it's very difficult for all the media outlets to act in unison. Uh, I would just like to... Uh, uh, quote a few instances of how we in Jammu and Kashmir were able, were able to handle the communication far more effectively than some of our colleagues in the other parts of the country. Uh, I think uh, a situation like a pandemic or uh, a disease or uh, some other problem which besets the whole of a territory is uh, an occasion when the state with the capital S has actually to lead the communication effort and uh, all the media outlets have to act in a sort of uh, collaborative ecosystem. This is not to say that they give up the role of questioning of the government, but as I said, if there was ever a need of some kind of collaboration between the state and its agencies and the different media agencies, it is in situations like this. And I dare say that we were able to achieve a very high degree of credibility, a very high degree of communication with all our constituents in so far as our communication during the media during the uh, COVID period was concerned. Not only were we able to put out credible figures, we were also, through use of traditional, non-traditional and other uh, media, also alert the people, alert the public at large to the various facets of the COVID pandemic. And it is perhaps a result of that communication that not only we were, were we among the best performers, whether it is in, time, in terms of testing, whether it is in terms of tracking, whether it is in terms of alerting, and now in terms of vaccination, when Jammu and Kashmir probably leads the entire country or is among the top few performers in the entire country and communication has had an extremely diff uh, extremely good role to play. This. The only last point I would like to make uh, before I conclude 
that other than the traditional warning, alerting, disseminating of information efforts, which uh, we did as a part of our media outreach efforts, uh, there was a very successful uh, program, which uh, those of you who are uh, plugging in from Jammu and Kashmir would recognize, which is a program called Sukoon. Now, Sukoon was a program which actually means be at peace, which we started on behalf of uh, the information department in the government of Jammu and Kashmir, which uh, brought a series of webinars to the people dealing on all aspects of the pandemic and not just medical aspects of the pandemic, but also the social, the psychological, the mental and other aspects aspects of the pandemic resulting uh, uh, cut, uh, across a wide swath, across a wide spectrum from, uh, uh, from staying at home to the psychological impact of staying at home to mental problems, to domestic issues, to dealing with children. And that also played an important role. The, in conclusion, what I would like to say is that uh, situations like pandemic uh, provide a unique experience when uh, uh, there is a fair degree of ground for collaboration between the state taking the lead and between the media and its, uh, and its various uh, arms working together to disseminate uh, <laughs> credible, uh, uh, professional uh, 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 information for the common good, for the larger good in a far more symbiotic and collaborative environment than our respective mandates otherwise ask us to do. And I think the experience of Jammu and Kashmir tells us that it has been done, it can be, it can be done. And as the paper by Professor Shamika Ravi also indicates the same, I think in a situation of crisis like this, it is time that we can work together. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank Thank all of you for the opportunity that you have given me to listen to the views of so many experts. Thank you, Dr. Kadri.